Hey Matt, how's it going? How's it going? What's up? So I heard that we're going to record a lab tour. Is this a good time? It's perfect, never better. All right, so tell us about the history of the lab. When did the lab start? Well, we got going here in mid-2012, I guess. I did my graduate studies at Wisconsin, and then I was at Scripps for a postdoc, uh, and I came here in 2012. What kinds of projects does the lab work on? Well, we're interested in studying how cells fold proteins, especially mammalian cells. We're interested in, in how it goes right, but also how it can go wrong, how that can cause disease, and trying to figure out strategies to, to fix it. We, we also work on biotech development, especially strategies for in vivo directed evolution that would let us do exciting things using evolution as a tool. How often do you come to lab? Well, now, back in the day, it used to be just about every day. Thanks to COVID, I hardly ever get to come to lab now. What's your favorite meeting to attend? Well, easily that has to be group meeting, right? Although, thesis defense parties are pretty great. How many people are currently working in your lab? Right now we have 13 people in the lab, which is, which is about the perfect number, I think, somewhere between 10 and 15. We'd love to meet some of the people in your lab. Oh, perfect. Well, here's Jimen, right here. Oh. Hi, Jimen. Hi, Matt. Hey, Jimen. Where exactly is the lab located? Oh, yeah. The children's lab is located on the fifth floor of Building 56. We actually expanded to some of the empty lab spaces at the end of the quarter with an ambitious plan to take over this entire hallway. Well, I'm just kidding. It was just part of COVID policy to increase social distancing. What room is this one? This room you see over here is our main lab where all the BL1 experiments happen. We also have our own bench spaces in this lab as well. What's a typical day like in the lab? Mm, that's a tough question. It really depends on the day. Uh, I would say in a typical day, I come into lab at around like 5 to, I mean not 5, just kidding, 9 to 10 in the morning, do some experiments and get lunch and do more experiments. Uh, I used to also talk to other lab mates, my fellow graduate students, go to seminars, write my lab notebook, read papers in between, but these days most of those activities happen at home unfortunately. What clothes do you wear when you come to the lab? Uh, a sweater and a pair of pants typically. I mean, it doesn't really matter much because when I'm doing experiments, I always just wear a lab coat. Well, I just make sure I don't forget to wear long pants and closed toe shoes. What's the best physical feature of the lab? Hmm. That, I can confidently say that it's the gigantic windows that we have in our lab. We have a lot of sunlight during the daytime, and it's also so pretty when the sun sets. Like, for example, you can see the swimming pool out the window. It's so pretty. I can see that there are some plants here in the lab. How many plants is the lab home to? Huh. Oh, hey, Rachel. Actually, Rachel is one of our in-house plant lovers. I will have her take over the question. Honestly, I think I've lost track. We have so many plants in this lab. What piece of equipment scares you? The Bunsen burner, particularly my Bunsen burner. What's your favorite experiment? I like looking at viral plaques. How is everyone staying safe while working during COVID? Well, we all wear masks and we've spread out the lab so we can all stay six feet apart. Plus, MIT tests us twice a week, which is really nice. What are some important lab memorabilia? Ooh, right here we have our Chris Richardson memorial tree. He didn't die, but he did graduate. What's your favorite thing on your bench? I by far have the best pipettes. What's the weirdest fact about the lab? Um, for a while, we had a pet cockroach for the lab. But after a bit, we fed him deionized water, and uh, that was that. How does the organizational aspect of the lab work? We keep all of our plasmids, primers, um, cell lines, and chemicals inventoried in a lab Google Drive. This uh, Google Drive has all the information about where you can find it in the physical lab space. As far as lab jobs, we all have weekly lab jobs, like autoclaving tips and Eppendorf's as well as more permanent lab jobs, like our EHS safety officer. And the first person to come in and the last person to leave is responsible for disinfecting the physical space. Hey Jess, you wanna show them the rest of the lab? Hey Rachel, sure. Follow me. Hey Jess, which way are we heading? So we are going to the tissue culture room, or the TC room. This room looks pretty different from a typical chemistry lab. What happens in here? 
this is where we do all of our cell culture. So we have things like this microscope, which we use to look at our cells. We have all of these liquid nitrogen doers, and these are used to freeze down the cells that we're not using right now. We have cells in here from almost 10 years ago, just waiting for us to wake them up from their long sleep. Over here we have our incubators. These help us keep our cells nice, cozy, and warm so they can grow. And finally, we have our biosafety cabinets. These help us maintain a sterile environment when we're working with ourselves so we don't introduce any kind of contamination. We passed by some white coats on the way into this room. Do you prefer white coats or blue coats? These white lab coats are for tissue culture activities only. The blue lab coats are flame resistant, but those stay in the main lab. Those ones are kept in there so we don't introduce bacteria or other kind of contaminants into our cells. And I prefer the blue ones. I think they look pretty cool, but they get pretty hot if you've been wearing them for a while. Is this the part of the lab that you spend the most time in? I do a lot of cell culture, so I've spent quite a lot of time in the TC room. Lately though, I've been working in the BL2 Plus lab, and that stands for Biosafety Level 2 Plus. This is where I get to work with replication competent viruses such as HIV and flu. So you have to gown up to go in there, so it's not on our tour today. Why did you join the Shoulders Lab? At first I thought the research was super, super interesting. I love how it is question driven and the direct relevance to human health. But once I got to MIT, it was really the people that sold me. What size gloves do you wear? I'm usually a small or an extra small, but it depends how much salt I've eaten. Aside from research, what's your favorite thing about the shoulder slab? Easily the people. The people that I work with are some of the brightest, most inquisitive people I've ever met. And I love how they also create an environment that allows anybody to feel comfortable asking a question. As a newer grad student, there's plenty of things that I don't know, but I do know that there's always someone around who's willing to help me out. How is the lab involved in promoting diversity and inclusion? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. So I'm actually our lab's current outreach officer. So I'm in charge of coordinating our outreach efforts as a group. Although outreach looks a little bit different nowadays with COVID, we still do what we can. So one of those things uh, that we usually participate in is uh, MIT's HIPSAT program. And during this program, we get to host a couple of homeschooled students from across the country so that they can experience what it's like to work in a research lab. Similar to that, we participate in MIT's MSRP program, where we get to host students from uh, underrepresented minorities in STEM from all across the country. And then on the more individual front, we have lab members that volunteer with the Cambridge Public Schools and serve as mentors to some of those students. Matt really, really cares about the quality of life of students, so much so that he chairs the Chemistry Department's Quality of Life Committee. This committee works to implement and uh, just improve the experience that we students have while we're at MIT. So I'm gonna show you this really cool, pun intended, room, and Jimin is gonna tell you a little bit more about it. Hey Jess, yeah, so this is our cold room. What do you wanna know about this cold room? So what room is this? Well, yeah, it's a cold room. We keep it at four degrees, as you can tell from its name. Uh, inside, we store some buffers and plates, and we also do protein columns in the cold room. What's your favorite piece of equipment? Huh. I would have to say that it's our FPLC. Uh, our FPLC is a little aged, so in the past couple of years, I've had multiple chances to disassemble it, take care of it, and reassemble it, during which time I developed strong attachment to it. It's also really old, but it does its job perfectly. So one last question for you, Jimin. Uh -huh. Cats or dogs? Uh, cats? Is that even a question? Oh, hey, Sam. Cats or dogs? Hey, dogs. Is that even a question? What? Okay, we're having a conversation later. <laughs> but for now, can you help us introduce this room? Sure. Hey, Sam, what room is this? Uh, this is Professor Klebanoff's uh, old laboratory uh, that we've moved into to both increase social distancing and to take over the fifth floor. Are you a morning person or a night owl? I'm a morning lark, but our lab has a rich history of night owls. What's Matt's advising style like? I wouldn't say that Matt has much of a sense of style, but he's a really great advisor. What's the best lab hack? The best lab hack? We're very good at fixing the switches on these striped headers. Where do you grab lunch while at work? I like to eat lunch in the break room, but I like to grab a sandwich from Al's Sandwiches. What's the funniest thing that's happened in the lab? A bird flew into the TC room. What new skill did you have to learn in the lab? I had to learn how to do mammalian cell culture. Conversely, what skill haven't you picked up during your time in the lab? I have yet to learn how to run a Western block. 
luckily, we have a pro at running Western blocks, Agata, to teach me. Yeah, sure, Sam. So this is where we run all of our protein gels. We have several SDS page running apparatuses, as well as a quick transfer system. As part of the collagen subgroup, I run a lot of gels to understand how different types of disease-causing collagen mutations can affect collagen assembly and secretion. We also use immunoblotting paired with co-immunoprecipitation experiments to validate some of our LCMS-MS experiments where we under try to understand how the cell differentially processes wild type and meat and collagens and how they can differentially interact with proteins in the ER. Thanks for that quick lesson, Agatha. Do you have any lab-related type A tendencies? Yes. Two years ago, a bunch of my cells started mysteriously fluorescing and then they all died. Since then, I now ethanol spray all of my quick cuts three times before putting them back into the hood. What do you like most about Matt? His commitment to mentorship. Do you have a favorite protein? And if so, which one is it? Collagen, of course. How has COVID affected the lab? So previously, we had a limit on the capacity in the lab and also working hours. But now we are all back to working full time. And um, we also used to have a lot of lab celebrations but obviously those have had to um, be uh, put to rest a bit. But um, it's really nice to be able to see everybody back in lab in person these days. Is this your bench? And did you specifically choose it? Yes, this is my US bench. I used to work in the other main lab, but in order to help um, keep the lab from being overcrowded, I moved over here. What's the lab's favorite pastime? Reading, running, baking, and playing with cats. We used to also always have a weekly lab movie night where we'd order dinner and either watch a show or a movie together. Um, sailing in the summer, um, taught by Lewis, was also a lot of fun. How does everyone meet with Matt and how do you all meet with each other? These days we typically meet over Zoom. We have a weekly group meeting as well as a weekly subgroup meeting. We also have a lab Slack which makes it really easy to communicate directly with Matt and each other. Um, very easily. Um, Matt also holds weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings with all the first and second year graduate students. What is your least favorite experimental protocol? SDMs and cloning. I'm really bad at getting colonies to grow. What's your least favorite thing about the lab? Hmm, that's a hard one. Robbie, what do you, what do you think? Least favorite thing about the lab is probably sitting here watching people play with their dogs on hot field court while I'm stuck in here but uh, it's also one of my favorite things about the lab. What's one thing you wish you knew when choosing a lab? Um, I think the best piece of advice that I could give would be always try to choose a supervisor who's someone that you can really make a good connection with um, and try and find a lab environment where you feel really comfortable and you feel like you could work in there for more than four years. And uh, I think finally then try and pick a project that you think you can be passionate about because um, yeah, those, I think a lot of people get it mixed around the wrong way. What's your favorite lab event? My favorite lab event was when we were playing Pictionary of the Zoom and uh, watching everybody's terrible drawing skills and then trying to guess what the, what the heck it was they were trying to draw. That was, that was really funny. What piece of equipment have you never used? Um, I've never used anything in the BL2 Plus lab. Uh, that's where everybody works with live viruses and I'm not allowed in there, so yeah, it's probably for the best. Right cryo glove or left cryo glove? I was told to always stick to the left hand side. Uh, it's more comfortable that way, apparently. <laughs> What's the most expensive thing that you've broken in the lab? Most expensive thing? When I was working in Germany, uh, I broke a French press. <laughs> I think it cost about 10,000 euro. They got it fixed, but uh, I was too afraid to ever use it again. What makes MIT so special? Definitely the people, such as all of you lovely people. Uh, there's a real level of dedication, passion, and uh, commitment to science that I've never seen anywhere else. What do you think is the oldest thing in the lab? The oldest thing? Apart from me, probably the, the, the centrifuge in the, in the main lab. Uh, it's definitely older than me, so it's got to be pretty ancient. It still works most of the time. It's amazing. <laughs> well, uh, i got to go in here and do an experiment now, but... Uh, Hope you enjoyed the lab, and if you have any questions for any of the other lab members, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Bye.